I'm on Fault Symmetry's Patreon server. Just because it's a place I feel most comfortable and I actually feel pretty accepted by the other um, members here. Uh, people here know that I have brain injuries. They know that I have issues with vision and memory and organization and some other stuff. I've even talked a little bit in um, TeamSpeak to them about what it was like for me as a young adult, a teen runaway, and how not knowing that I had brain injuries or anything about my life really, um, I felt ashamed and I was very out of control. I was raised around violence, which is why I have brain injuries anyway. And I didn't know how to live in the world. I didn't even know how to balance a checkbook when I ran away from home. Um, people taught me. I was very lucky that people taught me things like how to budget and how to pay my rent on time and how to change a flat tire and how to fill out job applications. And I was really lucky um, as a young person on the streets of Los Angeles as a um, what they called attractive female I things could have gone very wrong as a homeless person um, portals are being funny I probably everybody knows this so things could have turned out a lot worse than they did but basically I didn't know any life skills and I certainly didn't know how to cope with the anger Ah, uh, why um, I didn't know how to cope with the anger. I didn't know how to cope with the inability to uh, control myself. I had very little impulse control at all. Uh, I had grown up being told, really, I had grown up being told that I was lying about not having a good memory, that I was just lazy and didn't want to do what I was told. Um, Please remember that I was growing up with somebody who was fiercely violent and I would never want to cross that person ever in a million years. So uh, the idea that I would deliberately... Portals, man. They're killing people. The game doesn't know where we are. Uh, I started the recording over again. The idea that I would ever lie to my primary caretaker, my mother who was beating me, the idea that I would ever, ever cross her and lie to her, tell her I didn't remember things when I actually did, uh, that's absolutely impossible. I couldn't have survived my childhood lying to my mother. Um, there were things I had to hide from her to keep myself safe and not let her know. And of course, because she was very paranoid and very sure that I was something evil, um, uh, she was always vigilant to make sure that I wasn't lying to her. So there's no way I would have lied to her about um, not remembering something. If I don't remember something, it's because I don't remember it. Um, getting found out for lying would have, it could have killed me. So I uh, lived in a state of terror for a really long time before I finally ran away. The only reason I ran away, the major reason, was that I could not take the abuse anymore and I was old enough to start physically defending myself and I was afraid of what I might do to her if I stayed and she kept abusing me. I was afraid that I would end up in jail. So I left. Uh, Nobody taught me how to live. I had to figure it out myself. And whether or not I did a good job is anybody's guess. But I'm 59 years old. It's hard for me to hold jobs. It always has been. And I've only been able to hold the most menial of jobs. I never got to finish university because there was no money. So I've had really terrible factory jobs and um, jobs where I've had to clean up after sick people and... Um, jobs nobody else wanted because they paid badly or they were dangerous or they were um, disgusting and I was overworked you know 12 hours a day some the last full-time job I had 
I work 12 hours a day for 72 days in a row with no days off. Um, and I've been homeless off and on, cyclically it's called, m my entire life. I've never really had a stable place to live, just cheap apartments and roommate situations and stuff like that. So I've bounced around all over the place and never really had a place to just be. I, um, I need you to hear something. I know you're scared about the, um, dark spot on your brain, but the doctors told you that your brain has compensated for the damage, uh, and that's why we call it brain injury instead of brain damage, because the brain is a very, very adaptable organ, and when one part of it is dead and dark and doesn't work, other parts kick in. Um, I happen to have a really high IQ. I'm not bragging. It's nothing I did. I was just lucky. So my intelligence is nothing that I did. I, it was just genetics. I just happened to be lucky enough um, to have extra intelligence. Now, if I had had no brain injuries, I probably could have done a lot better with my life um, because my memory would have been better and I could have um, remembered things and finished things. I need this game to not do this. Can I walk? This will be really hard because there's mobs out here. I probably shouldn't be here, but I'm actually afraid to go back through the portal. Um, so I did the best I could, and I didn't know. When I was a young person living out on the streets, you know, the streets are a violent place, and I knew about violence, and I knew how to be violent. I had one of the best teachers on the planet. She taught me well how to be violent. And I did things that I'm not proud of, and I uh, didn't have a personal ethic. You know, there was no reason not to just do what I wanted to do um, to get by. So I'm not real proud of what some of the things I did as a young person. Um, but I didn't know any better because I hadn't been taught any better. I learned. I learned over time. I learned over time. I became an ethical person because I wanted to and I worked very, very hard to stay one. Uh, you referred to yourself as brain damaged, uh, like it was a joke. Um, it's kind of a slur. Uh, people say it a lot. I'm brain damaged. Ha ha ha. I can't do things where I'm supposed to. And they think it's really funny, but when you live with brain injuries, you know that it's, um, it's just plain back-breaking hard work, and you're often, well, I have been often met by people with skepticism, or like, I don't know, man, I think she's dangerous, I think she's going to do something off the wall, I think she's going to hurt somebody, for no reason except that they're prejudiced about what it means to have a brain injury. Every brain injury is different. Everybody's body copes differently. Everybody's brain copes differently. So what's right and natural for you is not right and natural for me. So nobody should try to second guess how somebody else should cope with a brain injury. Now you talk about how your therapist wants you to expel negativity. Um, I have a hard time filtering myself. Uh, what I think of people, I, I'm too honest. I tell them when they are acting like jerks, I tell them. I wouldn't be a good politician and I wouldn't be a good diplomat. I can't figure out if I picked up that brown mushroom. Uh, and there, yeah, there it is. Brown mushrooms are really hard for me to see. Um, I have a real hard time filtering what I think and not have it come out of my mouth, especially if somebody asks me what I think of something. Uh, sometimes I just stay silent. Now, what I don't know if your therapist is not making this distinction, but what you're describing is not making this distinction. Yeah, it's good to expel the negativity by verbalizing it, by getting it out of your head and getting it out of your mind so that you um, maybe won't do it in public, but there are ways to do that, and it's not safe to do that just out in the open in public. 
It's not. Um, also, it will teach you the habit of verbalizing stuff out in the open in public, and that's dangerous. That's just plain dangerous. Um, what's best for me is to find a safe place. People that I can trust, or just having a conversation with myself. I mean, saying stuff out loud about um, people in my life who are um, causing me stress or anxiety or actual danger. Look where the deal is now. And I can't even get out of the portal. Oh, boy. Um, it's, I, it's healthy for me to get that out, but not in the presence of people who won't understand. I can't say it just out in public because I can't control how people will react. I can't just blurt out what I want to in front of the person that's causing me the stress or that has asked me an honest opinion, and I'll give you an honest opinion, believe me. Um, what I need to do is find safe places to verbalize stuff, and that is uh, talking with people that I trust or just having a conversation out loud to myself or addressing them out loud but by myself not with them present so that I don't do or say something that's going to possibly harm me they might misunderstand me I may not mean anything negative I may not be attacking them but that might be the way they would interpret it you see what I'm saying so yeah getting the poison out as you're the top or the negativity out as you're saying it um, that's not a dumb idea, but do it in a safe way so you won't be self-defeating. And be real aware that you don't want to get in the habit of verbalizing stuff out loud that can be perceived as negative. You don't want to get in the habit of that. Don't train your brain to just say stuff that's going to cause people hurt. And I can't discern what's going to cause people hurt. For me, it's a lot better if people just tell me the truth. Um, if they have misgivings about me or something, I'd rather just hear it outright. But we don't live in a culture where people have feel like they have permission to do that most of the time. So it's real hard for me to get a straight answer out of people sometimes about, um, are you okay with me doing this or, you know, something like that. They won't give you an honest answer. And that's really frustrating because they've been taught that if they do give an honest answer, they're going to get punished for it. There's going to be repercussions. Honesty comes with a price in this culture, let's face it. So, don't rag on yourself. Don't start this stuff about you're crazy, you're, what was the other word you used, deranged, something like that. We're all different. All of us are different. The structures of our brains, our life experiences, all of us are different. What I think is true to a certain degree is not what you think is true. I don't even know if you experience the color green the way I experience the color green. You know what I mean? Because of the shape of your eyeballs, um, because of your optical nerves, because of the way your brain processes information. I don't know if green looks to you like it does to me. And I will never know. We have no way to find out. Crazy, deranged words like that. Bonkers. You said bonkers. That's what it was. Those are, uh, again, they're epithets, they're slurs about people with disabilities. You know, you didn't wake up one day and just decide, I'm going to be a neuroatypical. That means you're not typical, your brain is not typical. Nobody's brain is the same. There are averages, you know, most people see things this way or remember things that way, we think. But there are, there's a wide spectrum of experience. You're a non-typical because your brain has differences, real physical differences from what's considered normal, okay? A lot of people do. People with autism spectrum disorder, or they call it disorder, but I just think it's a difference. People with cerebral palsy, people with Down syndrome, lots of people have neurological differences. And they have a lot to contribute to the planet, whether the planet will let them or not, because of it, because of culture's prejudices and superstitions and stereotypes about what all this stuff means. That's a whole different thing, of course. And that's why I try not to use words like crazy and stuff, because it props up the stereotype that we're dangerous or stupid or 
uh, incapable of coping with the real world. You have coped with the real world with a dark spot on your brain, probably since you were 12 years old. I don't even know how long I've had damage. I don't even know how much damage I have. It affects several lobes of my brain, and it's been a real struggle my whole life. And I've dealt with it, and I've compensated for it in, in really resourceful ways. And I'm pretty proud of the fact that I've done as well as I have for as long as I have. You know, I play this game a lot. It's been really good. I also have post-traumatic stress disorder. I just, uh, I just a reaction, a physiological reaction to being afraid or being threatened. Um, whether literally being threatened or whether I just perceive a threat, such as the game, you know, the startle stuff that goes on in the game with sounds that are dangerous and ominous and conditions that are frightening, like not being able to get through a portal. Uh, it took me a long time to be able to play this game on anything besides peaceful or easy, and I only turned easy on if I was in mob spawn. Like, in a single player world, I would build the mob spawner in peaceful, and then I would get the drops from the mobs in easy, but I was barricaded in so that nothing could hurt me. Um, I had to put this game down for six months. I couldn't even play it because it was making me so sick. I was getting so depressed and so stressed out and feeling so inadequate. And people I was playing with were laughing at me and making fun of me and didn't believe me. Or, you know, just like in childhood, people didn't believe me. And I thought, well, I thought maybe they were right because there were more of them than me, right? Of course, people don't know other people's experiences, so it really wasn't fair. I was going to go to Old Spawn, but since things are so tricky with portals and stuff, I think I'd better go back someplace safe. So I put the game down for six months because it was making me really sick. I was becoming suicidal. I was, and I promised myself I would not ever attempt suicide again. So I took the game off my computer, and when I put it back on, when I went back to the Pongyang website, and downloaded it again. I was crying and shaking. And uh, I uh, learned. Now on this server and another server, just recently, just this year, I have had, for the first time, I've been to the inn and fought the dragon. True, it was with other people on a server. It wasn't in single player. But there was a time when I could not have done that. You know? Uh, I'm getting ready to have my first wither boss fight, and I want to have it out in the wild, not in some contraption where you smash its head into bedrock so it can't hurt you. I want to have a real wither boss fight. Um, some of my favorite mobs in the game now are the Witch, the Enderman, um, the Blaze, and the Wither Skeleton. I, those are the mobs I like, because they're some of the toughest mobs. That's a big change for me. So, yeah, if you if you need to get the what they're calling negativity, it's natural impulses. Our need to criticize other people is normal, and, and, and uh, it's often healthy. It lets us discern what's an actual threat or danger to us if we know how to control it. And learning how to control it is really important, and that's probably what you need to do. Learn to control it so that you're not reactionary and just first impressions I hate you just because whatever triggered in me look at that isn't that cute I heard him talking about this putting a boat down with a, on top of a flower isn't that cute yes my boats are purple I'm in my 8-bit te texture pack I'm not of course in 16-bit because I mean in default because I just get a little bit better um, um, FPS and Whoop, it's also very easy for me to see. See my crosshair and stuff? <sighs> Give yourself the chance. Don't resist it, alright? It's a fact. You probably already saw the picture of the little dark spot on your brain. It's true. Don't resist it. That which you resist persists, in this case especially. Because if you pretend like you're not... If you pretend like you don't need something different than a lot of other people need, you're going to keep needing it, and you're um, 
disabling yourself because you're not getting what you need. So go with it and see what happens. You know, the medication takes a while because it takes a while for the brain to compensate hormonally and chemically for what the, what the medication is causing. It takes a while for the brain to get used to the concept of having a different chemical makeup than it had before. That's why it takes six weeks. Almost all medications that affect the brain take about six weeks. Go with it. It's a new experience. It's not a threat. It's not a danger to your way of life. It's a chance to improve your way of life. Look at it as that instead of as something weird that you don't know what it means or how it's going to affect you. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. Obviously, things are um, enough unhealthy in your life that you went and got a brain scan you're not satisfied with the way your brain is operating and you got a brain scan right so improve the quality of your life now you have information now that can make things better and your and improve the quality of your life use that information do it carefully find out about the brain injury association of america they have all kinds of help they have um a, a huge notebook where they can teach life skills and how to organize and how to color code things so that you can find them easier and memory tricks and Brain Injury Association of America and they will probably have a chapter where you live or near where you live anyway. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. Don't be ashamed. This is nothing that you decided, oh, I'm just going to be a goof off and have brain injuries. It's not like that. It doesn't mean that you're inadequate or a bad person. It means that there's something about your body that makes it difficult for you to do certain things. Okay? That's all it means. You know? Some people are colorblind. Some people are left-handed. They didn't wake up one day and say, Oh, I just want to be different from everybody else. So it's hard to find a mouse that fits. And it's hard to see the colors in Minecraft. They didn't do that. It's how their body was formed. In your case, it's a traumatic injury. Um, learn about it. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, there are various degrees of brain injury. You have this degree. You're functional. You game. You talk. You have a life. You, you know, you have stuff outside of gaming that you do and commitments that you keep and responsibilities that you have and people that you love and, you know... So having a brain injury isn't like, it's not like a sentence. You're not being put to, in prison. A lot of really cool people have brain injuries. Um, Harriet Tubman, uh, she, was a, uh, she was living in slavery and she escaped. She ha somebody had thrown something at her head. I don't remember what, but a heavy metal object. And it hit her so hard that it dented her skull and she was unconscious. They didn't think she'd live. She was a field hand slave because she looked so funny and she acted so weird because of the um, um, trauma to her head. Um, she also had narcolepsy where she would fall asleep with no warning. Harriet Tubman, who couldn't read or write and who had all those challenges, escaped from slavery and then went back into the deep south and guided over 300 people out of slavery to the north. Follow the drinking gourd, follow the Big Dipper. That's the uh, uh, constellation that's in the northern sky. The North Star is attached to it. Uh, got people out of slavery and you know, people were coming after them with dogs and guns and 300 people she never she said I never lost a passenger on the Underground Railroad I never lost a passenger she's one of my role models so she's real special to me be proud of the fact that you've lived your life with a brain injury for so long and have done as well as you have and look forward to the fact that now you get to learn 
maybe ways to make things easier and better for yourself so that it doesn't have to be so hard and so scary and you don't have to feel so much like a failure because now you know oh I act like this because I have brain injuries okay well now that I know this how do I learn to act differently do I learn to act differently or do I like the fact that I act like this and not like other people maybe this is a new and better way of acting just because everybody does something the same way doesn't mean that they're all doing it the right way. Maybe your way is the right way for you. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox now. I just worried about the way you were talking about yourself. Like you were a loser or a failure or a problem or incomplete or inadequate or... It worried me because... Being hard on yourself is just going to make it harder to feel better, to get better, to do better, to live better. That's Fultz's new house. I came up here. See, there's no door in the front. I looked all over for the door. I finally found it. It's over here. I went in the door, and I saw, boom, it doesn't have a back. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Be nice to yourself. You've been through enough. You know what I mean? Oh, God, I went over the hole of death, and I didn't fall in. Be nice to yourself. You've been through enough for most of your life. This is a new chance and a new start. Appraise the situation carefully. Trust your judgment. Um, discuss it with people whose judgment you trust. Get involved in the Brain Injury Association of America. They know about this a lot of them are people with brain injuries they know about this doctors go to doctor school doesn't mean they know how to live with a brain injury um, talk to people who have been through it it helped me a lot it helped me a lot so here's to more dragon fights and wither boss fights and learning how to have friends in spite of the fact that you think differently than they do and finding people you can trust who don't mind that you think differently than they do like some of the people on this server have done um, they don't mind they like me the way I am take good care of yourself don't pretend it's not true don't pretend it's not happening. Denial will only keep you stuck. It won't make things better. It won't help. Take good care of yourself. Love yourself. Even if you don't think you deserve it, love yourself. Do something healing. You wouldn't be abusive to a friend or family member who was going through this, would you? So don't be hard on yourself. Just don't. There's enough people out there to mock you and ridicule you and make fun of you. I've been playing on a server where people actually think that the fact that I went through three months where my vision was bad was no excuse not to play on a darn Minecraft server. Because what happens in real life doesn't affect the server. Yeah, it does. It does. If you can't see, you can't play. It was a really laggy server and... There was no point in even trying to build there because it would have just meant death after death. It was a very inadequate server. I was getting 7 FPS and I couldn't see. So, this is your life. This is your chance to improve your life. To have a better quality of life. I would highly suggest that you take that chance. I mean, what have you got to lose? And look what you've got to gain. You know? Look what you've got to gain. There's a zombie in my underground. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. I'd hug you, but my arms don't bend. Bye. Like, dislike, share, comment, subscribe, and let's go get it!